Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 13.3, okay? It says, if the coefficient of kinetic friction between the 50 kilogram crate and the ground is mu of k equal to 0 0.3, determine the distance the crate travels and its velocity when t is equal to 3 seconds. The crate starts from rest and p is equal to 200 newtons. Okay, so what we have in this problem in here is that we have our crate and it's being pulled by this force P at this 30 degree angle. Okay, now what I like to do for these problems is that I like to write my givens first. So first we're given that our mass is equal to 50 kilograms. Then we're given that the kinetic friction is equal to 0 0.3. We're also given that the time that we want to find this distance and velocity is equal to 3 seconds. And our force, P, is equal to 200 newtons. Okay? So, these here are our givens. And we're asked to find the distance, D, or S, and our velocity. Okay? So, in order to start this problem, since we need to calculate the sumatorial forces the first thing that we need to do and going back to our statics videos is sumatorial forces okay so uh i'm sorry free body diagram so we're going to go and do a free body diagram for this problem so we got our free body diagram and the crate looks something like this so we got our rectangular shape we got a force P pulling at a 30 degree angle that looks something like this. We know this P is equal to 200 newtons. And let's state that the angle is 30 degrees. Okay, that's good for that. We have the friction that is occurring between the crate and the floor that we're going to call it F of friction. We have the weight of this crate going down that we are going to call it w and we have a normal force opposite to the weight okay so this is how our free body diagram looks like and we're going to start with our sumatorial forces in the y direction and the reason why we're starting with the sumatorial forces in the y direction is that we're moving horizontally through the right but in the vertical position where neither move it up or down therefore our acceleration is equal to zero and our sumatorial forces should be equal to zero so we got sumatorial forces in the y direction should be equal to zero okay we're going to assume that going up is positive and since we know that then what are the forces that i have in the y direction well i have positive normal force then i have positive the y component of this 200 newtons is going to be 200 multiplied by the sine of my angle sine of 30 degrees and lastly i will have minus w okay and all this should be equal to zero so taking into account we do know our w and the reason for that is that we know how much is our mass for this crate which is equal to our 50 kilograms that is given in here. So if we solve for n, we're going to have negative 200 multiplied by my sine of 30 degrees plus w. Well, w is going to be my mass multiplied by my acceleration in the y direction, which is 9.81, our gravitational acceleration. And I think that's it. All right. So we're going to plug this into our calculator and let's see how much we get. So if we plug this into our calculator, we should get a total of 390.5 newtons. Okay, so we found out a normal force. And the reason why we're trying to find this normal force is because this frictional force is dependent of our normal force. Now, if you remember about statics, our frictional force is fun and it's fun because the frictional force is equal to mu multiplied by n so it's f u n fun now 
if we calculate and we plug our numbers, mu is giving us 0 0.3 for the problem, and our normal force is our 390.5 newtons that we just calculated. And if we plug this into our calculator, we will get a total of 117.15 newtons for our frictional force, okay? Now that we know our frictional force, we can start applying our summatorial forces in the x direction. But in this case, these are not going to be equal to zero. They're going to be equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction, okay? We're going to assume that going to the right is positive. And therefore, what do we have? Well, we can start with our frictional force. It's going to the left, meaning that it's negative. So we got negative frictional force, 117.15. Then we have positive this x component of the 200 newton. So we got plus 200 multiplied by my cosine of 30 degrees. Got to be equal to my mass times acceleration in the x direction. But we also know how much this mass is, which is 50 kilograms. So we can replace this m with 50. And we'll have an equation with only one unknown. So we can solve for my acceleration in the x direction, which will be 117 positive 0.15 plus, I'm sorry, minus in this case, 200 cosine. I'm sorry, I mean, I got confused. We're not moving these guys over here. We're moving this 50. So our acceleration in the x direction is going to be 117 negative 0.15 plus 200 cosine of 30 degrees, all divided by 50. Okay, and if we plug this into our calculator, let's see how much this is. This will give me a total of 1.12 and this is in meters per second square. So now that we reach our acceleration, but we're being asked to find velocity and position. Therefore, what we need to know is that our acceleration is equal to our change in velocity divided by our change in time. If we solve for our change in velocity, we will realize that this is equal to our acceleration times our change in time, okay? Later on, when we find velocity, we will also need the relationship that our position, our velocity is equal to our change in position divided by our change in time. And if we solve for our change in position, we will have velocity times the change in time. Okay? So we're going to utilize these two relationships in order to find our velocity and position. And starting from our velocity, we're going to have the integral of our change in velocity has to be equal to the integral of our acceleration times the change in time. Okay, now our velocity starts at zero because this starts at rest. And our final velocity, we're just gonna call it V. For our acceleration, we're going to start, uh, for our time, since we're doing derivative with respect to the change in time, we're going to start at zero and we're going to end up our T final t okay we can replace our acceleration for the acceleration that we found to be 1.12 so we got 1.12 dt if we solve the integral on the left side we have but that v has to be equal to 1.12 times t okay and now we found our velocity equation if we want to find our velocity when time is equal to 3, so velocity when time is equal to 3, we're just going to pull out 3 into our equation, and we will have 1.12 times 3, and if we plug this into our calculator, we will get a total of 3.36 meters per second. Okay, so this is our first answer. Then, later, we're going to apply the same concept that our change in position has to be equal to our velocity times change in time. Our position starts at zero. Final position, we're going to call it S for final position. And then our time starts at zero. And our final time, we're just going to call it T. We can replace our velocity for the velocity equation we just found in terms of time. Therefore, we're going to have 1.12 
12 t times the change in time. So in our integral on the left, we're going to have s for position. And then on our right side, we'll end up having 1.112 times d squared divided by 2. Okay? And here back again, since the problem is asking for it, we're going to find our position when our time is equal to 3 seconds. So what we have to do is that we're going to plug in time equal 3, 1.12 multiplied by 3 squared, all divided by 2. And if we plug this value into our calculator, we will get a total of 5.04 meters. And this will be the final answer for our position. So if you guys like the video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.